there have been a lot of comments inquiring about how we could make a shulker unloader that works with empty boxes. Because most unloaders will break if you place in empty boxes. So I came up with this design that works with empty shulkers and full shulkers. You can place in any number of either one and it will unload all of the items out of the shulkers and break any empty ones that it sees along the way. Not only that, but all of the boxes will get stored in their very own chest. So it sorts out all of your shulker boxes and sends the rest of the items off to your storage system. You can just attach this to any of your pre-existing item sorters. But we're also gonna go over an optional lossless dropper elevator that can be built at any height to help with customization options so that we can attach this to any sort of storage system. Before we build it, there are a few things to keep in mind, such as where you want the location of your chests to be. If we build this just flat on the ground, our input chest and our shulker chest are going to be a little high up, where we can dig this down into the ground by two blocks to have these chests more accessible. So the build area will be heavily determined by where you want those chests and whether or not you want the optional dropper elevator. So all of those things will be in your control. But regardless, this is going to be nine blocks long. And if you want the bare bones unloader, that will only be three blocks wide. So nine by three. But if you want to include the dropper elevator, that will be seven blocks wide. Now, if you want your chest to be lower to the ground, we're going to start off by digging down two so that your shulker box chest is going to be flush on the floor if you dig down two. Or if you don't want to dig down two, we can just go up by two blocks and place the chest right here. So if you build this flat on the ground, this is where your shulker box chest will be. And then your input chest is going to be higher up as well. But we're going to start off with this chest. This is the chest that will contain the empty shulker boxes. Starting off, we want to place a hopper pointed into the back of this chest. Make sure the hopper is pointed into the chest. Then place a temporary block next to that hopper so that we can place a dispenser facing back toward the hopper that is diagonally up from it. Then place a hopper pointed into this dispenser with a chest on top. And these chests could be turned sideways if you want them to be. The orientation doesn't matter, but the top left chest is going to be for your input, where you place your shulkers to be unloaded. And the bottom chest is where the empty boxes will end up. Then we're gonna place a solid block on top of the dispenser, a temporary block down here with two solid blocks on top of it, then another temporary block up here so that we can place a sticky piston next to this block pointed down directly above the hopper. Then break out that temporary block and place a chain on the sticky piston, a vertical chain. Then place four glass blocks to encase the chain and the air below the chain. Now aligned with this hopper, two blocks away from the chest, we're going to place two temporary blocks so that we can place three hoppers pointed away where the third one is directly underneath that first hopper right there. And this is where your dropper elevator is going to go or your storage system if you're not going to build the dropper elevator. Either way, this is your output, where the items will go. Then next to this middle hopper, we're going to place a solid block, then a solid block over there and diagonally down in between the two. Then we're going to place more solid blocks in this pattern and place a repeater right here on a two tick delay. So poke that repeater one time, then place a repeater next to it with no extra delay, and then another repeater next to that on a three tick delay. So poke that one two times. Then place three dust in the holes, like so. Now we want a solid block above this hole in the corner, above the repeater, and then diagonally up from that. Then four dust going up these blocks, and next to this topmost piston. Then behind the dispenser, we want a solid block, then three more blocks above the repeaters and above that dust, then two comparators right here, and be sure to face toward the back when placing those comparators. 
then a repeater on top of this block facing toward the front on a three tick delay. So poke that repeater two times and then place another repeater with no extra delay facing the opposite direction, going into a solid block with an observer above that repeater looking down. Then a solid block next to that and two dust on top of these, like so. Now on this other side, we want to place a block coming out of the comparator. So right here, place a solid block, then place a sticky piston facing up on top of that block, an observer facing toward the back on top of that piston, and then a solid block behind that observer, like so. Now we need a temporary block so that we can place a block right here, so that we can place a repeater on top of this block facing toward the back so that the comparator is pointing into the block that is directly behind that repeater. So the comparator will power the repeater. Then we're gonna place five blocks in this pattern going back from that repeater, place a comparator facing toward the back on that side, and a comparator facing toward the front on that side. Then connect these together with three dust. Place a solid block above that dust, then coming out of that comparator diagonally down from the block that we just placed. Then place two more blocks going toward the front and a redstone torch on the side of that block right there. Then a repeater on a max delay pointed toward the front with two redstone dust behind that repeater. Now we want a solid block above this torch and above this repeater. Another torch on the side of this block with a dust on top of this one. Now we want a copper bulb, doesn't matter what oxidation it is, we just want a copper bulb next to that dust, so the dust is pointed into the bulb, and then a block next to this piston, so that we can place a comparator that is looking at the bulb and facing toward the observer. And that's it. The unloader is now totally complete. So if we want to attach this to a storage system, you can just do that without the dropper elevator. But if you do want the optional dropper elevator, we're going to place droppers right here next to this hopper. And you can place as many droppers as you need to, just going up. Doesn't matter how many you place. You could place 20 if you want to, doesn't matter. But I would recommend placing at least six droppers. If you place six droppers, there will be room to shove filters directly up against the dropper elevator where if you have less droppers, the redstone for the droppers will be in the way. And I would also recommend placing a chest on top of your dropper elevator. Regardless of how many droppers you have, place a chest on top of them to act as a temporary storage. But then we're going to place a solid block next to the bottom dropper, then two diagonally down from that, and then a fourth diagonally up from that. Then place one going that way, and four more right there. Then we're gonna place a comparator that is looking at the dropper through the block, going into a repeater, and then on the other side, we're going to place a comparator pointed into that block, and then a comparator facing the other direction next to that one. Then three dust in these holes. This is the extender that makes the elevator lossless because it will keep the droppers active even after the bottom dropper is empty. But now we need to make the clock, so we need to place blocks in the pattern that you see here. Then face toward the front and place a comparator that is pointed into this block right here. And make sure this comparator is on subtraction mode. Make sure that little light is turned on. Then place three dust in these positions and place a repeater facing toward the back in that hole. And that's it. This is an extended clock to make the dropper elevator lossless, to where items won't be left idle inside of the droppers. But now we need to power the droppers. So we need a redstone torch on top of this block, and then a solid block above that torch, and a torch on top of that, and just continue this all the way up. So that the topmost dropper either has a block next to it that is being powered by a torch, or has a torch next to it depending on if you have an even or odd number of droppers. Just work your way all the way up with blocks and torches. And we're now totally done. 
Now this is the unloader and the losses dropper elevator all complete. So now you just hook this into whatever storage system you want from this chest up here at the top. So like just, you know, a hopper line coming from this chest and then you can build filters off of this hopper line or connect this to a mist sorter or whatever kind of storage system you want to build. But there are a few more things to talk about, such as where do we put regular items that aren't in boxes? You'll want to place loose items that aren't in boxes somewhere farther down the system. So like if you built this dropper elevator, you could place them up in that topmost chest. Or you can add a hopper going into the bottom most dropper and then just place a chest on top of this hopper and place your loose items inside of this chest. So this is your secondary input for things that are not shulker boxes. So all of your shulker boxes will go in that left chest and all of your loose items will go inside of this chest or inside of the chest that's on top of the dropper elevator. Or if you have some other different system that you built that isn't using a dropper elevator, your loose items just need to go somewhere farther down the line. Now one problem with this is as items are being unloaded from shulkers and being unloaded from a chest, wherever they are combining is going to be loaded at double hopper speed. So like this dropper right here at the bottom is being loaded at double hopper speed. So we actually need to make the clock faster if we're going to do it this way to prevent a bottleneck just by switching out a couple of blocks to make the clock faster. Now it will keep up with double hopper speed. So regardless of what type of storage system you're using, just keep this in mind, that where the items are combining is going to be at double hopper speed. And so we need to avoid a bottleneck either by increasing the amount of storage in that location or by increasing the speed of the rest of the system. That's just something to keep in mind with any sort of item sorter, any sort of storage tech, is how many hoppers are loading the system and how many hoppers are unloading the system. You know, you can create bottlenecks. But it, honestly, bottlenecks usually don't cause problems. And if they do, if you ever notice a bottleneck in any, in any of your item sorters, you can always just add more storage and more hoppers in that location to give it more temporary area to build up in, to avoid any sort of problems. So don't, don't worry too much about it. It's just something to think about, maybe read into, you know, and experiment with. And as with any unloader, be sure not to place in loose items where the shulker boxes go. Like it would technically be okay because of the fullness checker on this design, but it's still just best to avoid that. One last thing to know about this design if you place in a single empty shulker box and nothing else, just a single empty shulker box, it will just kind of idle here until you load in more boxes. Um, nothing will trigger it because it's the only one in the system. But as soon as you add another shulker box of any kind, it will break all of the boxes and they will continue on. How you use this unloader is totally up to you. You can plug this to any sort of system or farm from something as simple as regular filters attached directly to the unloader to make a sorting system from scratch. Or you could just slap it on in replace of the input to one of your pre-existing storage systems, to a miss or a combo sorter, or to a farm to provide shulker boxes full of bone meal or gold to a farm. That's why I included the optional dropper elevator so that no matter what you're trying to attach it to, you'll be able. You can either attach this to a pre-existing system just straight from the hoppers down at the bottom without the dropper elevator. Or you can use the chest that is on top of the dropper elevator as your new input. Either way, it will just get plugged onto your pre-existing input or it will replace your pre-existing input. And I hope that makes sense. You can always pop over to my Discord if you ever want to discuss some of these things. You know, anything about item storage tech or farms or redstone, or just share your builds and talk to other Minecrafters. So hop over to the Discord to join the community. The link is always in the video description. 
But that's all we got for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, share, and subscribe. Be sure to leave a comment. Even if it's just to say hi, I would love to hear from you. Always remember that you are totally awesome. But above all, don't forget to have fun. Bye-bye.